Okay, so the question becomes, what is the force on a moving charged particle in a magnetic field? If you remember, we decided right at the beginning that magnetic fields arise because of moving charges, and then there's some kind of interaction going on. Well, so, well, let's see. Here are two wires, that I've, two little lengths of wire that we've placed in a magnetic field B. But the first wire, the wire on the left, has a current in it, and the wire on the right doesn't. So we know what's going to happen. We know that this one is going to experience a force. Uh, Fleming's left-hand rule says that it'll, it'll experience a, a force um, into the screen. But the other one doesn't. So what's the difference between the two? Well, it's, it's what happens to the charged particles. Well, let's take a little bit of a closer look. <clears throat> if we recall, we have this equation about current. What is current? Now, this is an equation from year 12. And so I equals NAQV or NAVQ, sometimes written. Well, can you remember what all these different things are in this equation? Have a pause and see. Well, N, remember, is the charge carrier density. So it's the number of charge carriers per unit volume in the, in the wire. A, well, A is the cross-section area of the wire. So, and, uh, so that's straightforward. And Q is, of course, the actual amount of charge on the charge carriers. And finally, then V is what, if you remember, is the drift velocity. And so the kind of average rate of progression of the charge carriers along the wire. And so in this case, of course, it's electrons. So in this case, we're going to have a charge E. But we'll, you know, it could be uh, if it was some other ions or something, we keep the equation general with a Q. Uh, okay, so well, what's this kind of, how does this help? Well, if we take a look at F equals BIL, which we know is the force on this current carrying conductor on the left, then, well, we can actually see an insert into this equation. We can substitute I equals NAQV in and have a closer look at exactly what's going on. So let's do it. So let's say, well, okay, well, we really know then that F is equal to B, the magnetic field strength that the wire is in, times the current, which we can now write as NAQV, uh, and then multiply by that by the length. But we can see what happens here is quite interesting, because we know that N is really the number of charge carriers per unit volume. And then we can sort of replace little n with N over V, therefore. And that means that we have an interesting thing because A times L is just volume, the volume of the wire, the cross-section area times the length. So hopefully you can see that we're going to have this situation. We're going to have Bn V QV over V. And the V is the volume cancels out. So then we end up with the magnetic field strength times the number of charge carriers times the charge of one charge carrier times the, the drift velocity of those charge carriers. Now this is quite interesting because what it's really saying is that the force on the wire is equal to the magnetic field strength that it's in multiplied by the total amount of charge multiplied by the speed at which that charge is on average moving along the wire. What, well now, we know in this case it's electrons, and the electrons are kind of progressing down the wire because the current's up the wire, and electrons are negative. They're really, on average, moving down the wire. I mean, electrons are moving in the stationary wire, but they're moving just because of their thermal energy, they're moving in random directions, and therefore the current, each one's current is in a different direction, and the force, therefore, is all in a different direction, and it cancels out, so there's no overall force. But, uh, but for this one, because there's an overall direction of current, the charges have an overall drift velocity, um, but not zero, then we get this effect. So it's the field times the total charge times the drift velocity. Well, that's really useful because that means that it illuminates the fact that we could actually consider a single charged particle 
moving with a speed v in a vacuum in a region of magnetic field. And we can actually write a new equation. We can say, ah, well, OK, well, the force on a moving charged particle in a magnetic field, therefore, is b times the charge on that charged particle times its velocity. And, but of course, we have to, we'll now put back our sine theta because it has to be going perpendicular. In this case, is at 90 degrees to the, to the field. But if it wasn't, it would be the component of velocity which was perpendicular to the field. So that's pretty cool. And that's an important equation. And, um, and this, in this form, it applies, it explains why a current in a wire experiences a force. Whereas in our new form, it just tells us the force that an individual um, charge, Q. So in other words, we put N equals 1. You know, if N equals 1, then it's just the force of that single charge carrier. Now, V is a drift velocity, which is its average velocity. But of course, if it was just moving in a straight line, that's what we'd get. OK, so let's have a look at what would happen then if we did just have a freely moving charged particle zooming along and straight into a field. So here's a field, magnetic field region, and it's going into the page. So yeah, so we're going to say, yeah, B, the field is into the screen. OK, so and let's have a kind of proton, for example. So here, here comes a proton, that's a charged particle, and it's heading towards the field there. So there we go, I'm just going to call it P for proton. Well, we can figure out the force, the size of the force which will act on the proton as it enters the field. Now, these are perpendicular, so sine theta would be 1. And so the size of the force will just be the size of the field times the charge on a proton, which is E, times however fast it's going. Uh, so that's kind of relatively straightforward to work out. Now, of course, what about, so if we have the values, we can figure that out. But what about the direction of the force? So here comes the, the proton, it enters the field and f equals bqv, but which direction? Well, we can use Fleming's left-hand rule again. What we've got to think is that a proton is a moving charge and does represent a current. It represents a flow of charge, and it's a positive particle, so the current is to the right. And, well, if you apply Fleming's left-hand rule, b into the page, current going left to right, then hopefully you'll agree that that will experience an upward force. And so when it uh, enters the field at that moment, there's an upward force acting on the particle, looking something like that. Well, of course, that's going to have an effect on the proton, and we know the value of the force, and is given by BQV. Well, the effect will be to change its path, and gradually, well, imagine it changes it to that direction. Well, Fleming's left-hand rule would now give a force in this direction, which would change its path again, and so on. But of course, that happens gradually. So it ends up going in a, in a nice circuit path. And we'll do something like that until it leaves the field and carries on in a straight line. Uh, so quite interesting. And you can check Fleming at any point. You can check Fleming's left hand rule to see exactly that that's true. You know, the, the force is always um, perpendicular to the, to the motion. So it's a centripetal force. But we're going to come back to that in particle physics in more detail. For now, we just have to be able to figure out what's going to happen to it. Let's look at an electron. Well, let's take an electron coming into the field. Let's suppose we have a little electron coming in from the other side. So here it is. And, or from down, let's go from down below. There it is. An electron zooming in. Bang. Well, when the electron enters the field, we can use Fleming's left-hand rule again, but we just have to be careful. We have to realise that this time, because it's a negative particle, we have to consider that, that a negative particle moving uh, in one direction, is it, is it so the velocity is that way, is equivalent to a current moving in the opposite direction. You know, conventional current versus the motion, the direction of the electron motion. So now, then, Fleming's left-hand rule would give us a force uh, to the right. So hopefully you agree, and so if you do a bit of Fleming there, and so that means that the electron's going to make a circular path, but in, in the sort of clockwise path. So that will bend around, you know, depending on how fast it's going and all the rest, around that way, and carry on in a straight line once it's left the field. 
Uh, so you need to be able to use Fleming's left hand rule to make sure you can work out the, what shape and direction the path will be. Uh, more calculations about that in particle physics, like I said earlier. Great.